All right, back to the CIC qualifiers, round of 32. And this time we've got Warcraft Gamers taking on Reason Gaming. Obviously Reason, one of the better teams in competitive Han right now. So uh, perhaps at quite a significant advantage here over a relatively unknown team in Warcraft Gamers. And we'll see how each side chooses to progress and try to take out the other. Bands are out. Parasite, Kronos, Pestilence, and Puppet Master are the heroes that will be removed from the pool initially. Interesting here that uh, WG chooses to address the Parasite, considering that Reason is a team that does not run as many junglers as one might expect, and as the metagame does sort of move away from the having to have a jungler in every single game. A little interesting that uh, they choose to prioritize that hero as you know one they want to remove from the pool against a team that doesn't run that many junglers and in a metagame that is less and less favorable to jungle play. So a bit of a disagreement there, I think, but not a major one as Parasite is definitely an oft-seen and powerful hero. Pestilence less seen, but definitely still a powerful hero, and of course Kronos and Puppet Master quite frequently seen and both really very problematic mm -hmm. for uh, for many teams. Saint Rox here is picking very fast, hasn't used any extra time yet, and pretty much just immediately makes his selection, so all the pressure is over here on the Legion side. And they've only got 36 more seconds of extra time, so they're going to have to make some fast picks, and man, that's just blitzing through everything. So Master Arms, Myrmidon, and Bramble. <laughs> Master Arms, Myrmidon, and Bramble will be the selections here, and St. Rock's just going to mass it super fast. Um, a Myrmidon, fine hero. Hopefully we'll see him in a tri-lane here, just because that seems to be where it always is the best. Uh, not the greatest as an offensive hero, and not the best as a even worse as a babysit support. Just doesn't do very well in that role. Dual mid could work for him as well, but I think the Master of Arms, Myrmidon, and potentially a third hero in a tri lane would work very well, so I'm kind of hoping that's what we'll see. Hoping we'll see an aggressive lane, and we'll see whether it's going to be a Bramble in the solo lane or two other solo laners, but lots of potential there. Hellborn side going to pick up Rhapsody Gauntlet and Aluna, so picking up their, both of their supports as well as I assume Master's going to be a support, but that's not necessarily the case. Gauntlet will be their third selection, so I'm thinking here Gauntlet, Aluna middle, and Rhapsody as a babysit support for whoever's in the top lane, plus a suicide, and so we're probably looking at a short laner and a suicide here for the Hellborn team. We'll see what they choose to do, but that likely is what they're looking to fill. Sir Bensington will actually last all the way down here to the fourth pick and through the second banning stage, so interesting. <laughs> uh, so Sam Rock's apparently feeling like that was his hero, wanting to get at it, and instead the it is Mad stolen Man. by the Legion side. So they'll go with the Madman instead. Obviously still a straight, very strong suicide. And I'm leaning more and to more towards the defensive trial line here, as Bensington does tend to get run as a suicide. But that doesn't rule out the aggressive try lane. You know, we've seen Benzito run in the mid, we've seen Benzito run in the short, so it wouldn't be impossible to see either of him in those two roles. But it's no surprise, almost always a solo Devourer. hero, and that makes me think they're going to be running dual lanes. So I'm thinking defensive dual lanes at this point. I don't like the Devourer pick. This Legion side has almost no late game. Benzington will scale fairly well. Bramble doesn't very well, and Devourer doesn't very well. If Master of Arms would be, run, be run in a farmer role, I could understand that a little bit more, but he's pretty clearly not, unless you're going to try to jungle somebody, and that doesn't seem like a great plan. Um, and Gravekeeper will be the last pick. Interesting, oh, this is the last side. Bands are out, and let's do them really fast. Ophelia Tempest and Slither being bound out for the lead side, so a couple of junglers and a short laner targeting the Hellborn's need in Slither, but two junglers odd considering they already had two supports, so I don't think those bands made a lot of sense. Saint Rock's removing Drug Master Bubbles and Moon Queen, so a short laner and initiator and a suicide and the versatile Drunken Master, so his bands make plenty of sense. Lead inside, I think, perhaps Let's wasted a couple, but oh well. And I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of this Legion lineup. They have three farmers who are all melee, so their damage dealers could perhaps be tripping over themselves, over each other in team fights. Hellborn, meanwhile, have strong initiation with Gauntlet. They've got a strong suicide and, ma and Madman, who has some late game potential, and a lot of damage coming out from Gravekeeper, who also has uh, some decent late game potential. Not a ton, but, uh, but a little bit. And we'll see how he does in invoice hands. I'm not worried. 
are they going to run the tri-lane here? It's just going to be weird with Devourer in the middle by himself. Okay, so that is going to be what the plan is. As it looks like they're going to be sending the aggressive tri-lane up top. Devourer also headed that way, so maybe, maybe not. Serpentis will be playing the solo bottom, and I like that decision there. I do like the tri-lane here, because before, as I said before, Murmurdon is a very good tri-lane hero, and that's really the role he fills best. So if you're going to pick that hero up, you should probably run him in a tri-lane. The issue is... Bramble's on a really great carry to be focused in a tri-lane. You probably want a harder carry than that because the protection is so deep and good that you can basically be like, all right, this guy's going to free farm, especially because it looks like Hellborn's side. You know, he's going to run Gauntlet and Rhapsody in the middle, which I think is a little odd. I'd rather have Luna pick in the middle lane, and it might be that they're switching this up. Yeah, I think they're switching this up, which is definitely a good idea, especially once they see this aggressive tri-lane, which I assume is going to be aggressive tri-lane. Um... Please switch it, you guys. I think that's going to help you out a lot more, but maybe, maybe not. And yeah, they might just rotate Rhapsody up here and go try versus try, which is also fine. They want that Illumina, man. St. Rock's not going to get caught by a hook, so... Oh well, they took a shot. Both words go down here, and it will in fact be the tri-lane on the Legion side, and it will be the aggressive tri-lane. So I like the aggressive tri-lane. I would have preferred, I think, Devour in this tri-lane, just because he's a much more offensive hero, and tri-lanes need, need, need kills to make sure that the supports get the levels, otherwise they'll get really, really underfarmed, really, really underleveled, and they'll get picked off way too easily. Ward over here is immediately countered by St. Rox, so that's already off to a bit of a bad start, but... Oh well, and it's going to end up being a tri-lane versus tri-lane up here in this top lane. I I expect the Hellborn's tri-lane to go better. Their range is far superior. They've got three 600 range heroes compared to just one on the Legion side. They've got multiple stuns, and Gravekeeper just hits super hard. It's going to be really, really difficult for Bramble to get up here and do damage to a lot of these heroes. Gravekeeper shall have no such issues. But before this develops too much, let's look at the middle lane. Gauntlet versus Devourer, Hook versus Hook. And that should be... Sorry, that something might be going on. Hard to call, you know, considering it's Probusk versus a hero, a player we've never seen before. you got to give the advantage to Probusk, but... You know, I don't think that either side is particularly at an advantage here. Perhaps even Devourer is actually up playing here. Weedfield will go on to Imboy there, and we'll see who gets the Bloodlust. Imboy popping an Elf Pot, and it will, in fact, be Master of Arms off of the side that dies. Imboy not even dying. And Mermaid here drops the weed field trying to get the kill there. Not going to happen. He's going to fall as well. One more auto attack. And Bramble is now is also going to get cleaned up on as that's going to be a 3 for nothing. And now he ends up with a hat trick. So 566 gold per minute for him. That's probably sustainable. And things are not looking super great here for this Legion side as no surprise the guys on Reason Gaming know what they're doing and get real offensive. Well, this isn't that big a tournament, so, yeah, you're going to run into the wall occasionally. Like, somebody has to do it, sorry. Anyway, I think uh, Devour might actually be the advantage in this middle lane, except for the fact that Rapsy's coming in off of the side, and Dev's now in some trouble. Hook, there it is. Infernal instability, couple more auto attacks, and that's dead Devour. So nice run there from Znawi, as he continues to be extremely aggressive. 3 0 one now. Now Gauntlet will win this lane, but the issue I had before is basically Gauntlet's burst damage is great, but it's not going to kill Devourer because Devourer is tanky, and once his Gauntlet's burst is gone, it's really hard for him to catch up and finish off heroes. Not really hard, but it's not easy. And as a result, I was thinking Devourer's Rot might be a little more effective when it comes to trying to get kills here, but now that Gauntlet has the level advantage, he's going to have a pretty significant gold advantage. He's got a bottle, which is now he's now faring to the bot rune in order to get the ruin for him and head right back to the middle. And this might actually develop into a 2 versus 1, as it also looks like Master of Arms is rotating to the middle lane, and I think the tri lane up top is going to dissolve. And we're going to see defensive dual lanes coming out from the Hellborn and offensive dual lanes from the Legion side. Rhapsody working his way back off to the side. Master's going to be here to help out, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Devour going to be a lot of trouble here. Staccato stuns are there. Hook right back in. And a couple more auto attacks is going to be enough. There goes now with the ultimate war streak. And despite Master Rum's trying to help out here, it's uh, it's not going to be sufficient. Ends up being a second death for Devour there. Already 5-0 here with the advantage for a reason gaming. And this is getting out of hand real fast. 
for the Legion side. Already down 2,700 gold and 2k experience. Bottom lane we haven't talked about at all. Master of Arms versus Benzington. This is a lane that Benzington should probably win just because of the Lance Long. But it'll be difficult to kill Ma uh, Madman as long as he plays relatively careful because of that stock, of course. But the Lance Along should continue to keep him out of lane. And we've currently got Benzington sitting at 200 gold per minute compared to Zane at 265. So no surprise really that Zane is winning this lane considering the player skill difference. But Benzington certainly holding his own. Now the fact that this is a short lane Benzington and a suicide Madman means that the short laner should win. But oh well. You know, it's it's reason. This is a team we don't really know too much about in Warcraft gamers. And I think we can sort of forgive them. And we're sort of going for the jump here. Madman will stalk away and be fine, as the Javs hit him, obviously. Shocking Meanwhile, middle lane Devourer actually pulls in Rhapsody and gets the counter kill after Master of Arms dies. But the DD rune is up on Gauntlet. He's taking a bunch of tower damage, and he's not going to continue to pursue. Instead, choosing to back off. Has a hook back up in a couple of seconds, but not enough mana. We'll head top for the Invis rune. And uh, the DD is only lasting about 5 seconds here, so he could get a kill on Devourer here if he stays relatively low. He's going to get a tree there, try to get back up to full health. See what happens. He does have Gauntlet, no, no Gauntlet blast for 45 seconds, so could look to get a kill here. Probably will be able to, and yeah, now you're in trouble there, buddy. Master Rhymes is here, though. Puts the charge shot down. We'll see what happens. Devourer not really enough health to turn this around, but won't die. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Benzington going to be in some trouble. Rhapsody roaming all the way bottom, and that will be a cleanup kill. So, Rhapsody really roaming quite a lot. And she obviously started of top in the tri lane, getting the three kills, helping middle out a little bit, gripping up a couple kills on Devourer, and now one more onto Sir Benzington. So, her heavy roam, no doubt, proving very useful. Dance floor goes down. Where's the hook? There it is. Nice attempt to hook back, but not going to be enough as Gunwald dies once again on that Master of Arms. Now the proud owner of three of the Legion's eight deaths. Madman continuing to control this bottom lane. Zane at 320 gold per minute. Obviously the third highest former in his own team behind Gauntlet and Rhapsody. And boy, actually up top, not doing too well on CS here. He is currently 27 and 5. That's tied for second on his team with Gauntlet. Now 28 and 5. But with the short lane, and uh, you'd think that, and the Luna here helping him out, you'd think, oh, he'd be doing more. Meanwhile, middle lane Devourer does fall once again as Gauntlet blasts on top of Skyda Stones. And the, actually, the Stalker Bell Roll comes in from Zane as he's hasted. Hanging out. Trialing going to reform a little bit up. No, sorry, different lane going to reform a little bit as Benzington's looking for a gank up top. They're going to jump on a Bramble here, but that might not work out so well. Magikarp goes down, but no follow up there. Nightfall going to be here onto a Luna, and Weedfield will also miss, but the Spore Breath stuns her, and the Lance Lung finishes her off. So St. Rock's up here going to die as the you nice know, gank from Sir Benzington helps set up that kill. A couple of missed uh, abilities there, and obviously the Magikarp really not doing very much, but they still end up picking up a kill as they use the Nightfall. And we're going to sit back here a little bit without his buddy and make sure he doesn't get trumped himself. Obviously, Gravekeeper, really high damage output, especially when it comes to auto attacks. He just hits super hard, but he's squishy. He's so, so squishy. So if he gets caught out even a little bit, it's really, really easy to kill him. And obviously, without Aluna here, feeling a little bit vulnerable. Now that he's got the tri lane back, though, let's see what he chooses to do. Oh boy, Bramble. Not a good idea. Staccato Suns go down there. Kelfield actually will hit Rhapsody, and Bramble will be able to get the hell on out of there. A little bit too tanky there to be taken out. Middle lane Master of Arms actually hooked, or Ultimate goes on to Gauntlet, but he's just going to be like, whatever. Yeah. Probus doesn't care. Devourer has his bottle. No huge surprise. Hook back in onto Tev and a couple more auto attacks, and he's dead. Oh boy. The Hellborn have destroyed a Legion tower. So, the counter from Gauntlet, pretty significant, as obviously he has such a level advantage and such a creep, uh, uh, gold advantage that it's now becoming very difficult for the Legion to do anything in this middle lane. Master Rum's going to hug the tower, but that's not going to prove very successful for him, as we've got a couple. Heroes coming in from the side, looking to set up a gank. Zane's working his way to the bottom here. 
Might have gotten spotted by the courier, but we'll stalk away and he'll be alright. Master of Arms meanwhile. Gonna take some auto attacks here from Gravekeeper and a send from Aluna. Robots finishes him off with a hook, and that's going to be yet another death for now having tied himself with Devour, and things are continuing not to go very well for the Legion side. 11 to 2 hero kill lead, 7k gold, 5.5k experience, obviously at this point. 25% of the total resources is the difference between each side. And that's a pretty significant advantage to the Hellborn at this point. Stock and Bear all goes out here on to Benzie to also be an employee ultimate, and that's going to be yet another kill. This time on to Benzington, his second death of the game. Bottom tower will be pressured here as they're going to kill the catapult. Middle lane, similar situation. Already falling pretty well, actually. Stuns as wow. Gauntlet already has a portal key. One more attack, and that's going to be able to finish him off. Now he actually gets yet another kill. Now 5 1 and 6. And Bismarca on that to devour. Not having a super fun game. Obviously, Gauntlet already with that portal key. Certainly tower. sitting on 500 gold per minute. Maybe we should be up charts here. Yeah. St. Rox is clearly terrible. Looking for the Joust there. Won't hit Zane. Lance along does, but they might look to turn this around now here. Imbawe going to be able to start picking up a lot of corpses and stun this. Benzington actually snipe from St. Rox. Finishes him off. So nice long range power throw there. Completely unnecessary, but hey. He wants some GPM too. Nearly at 200 gold per minute. And Bramble, the only hero on the Legion side above that 200 GPM mark. And the only hero above that Aluna in terms of total farm. And so, yeah. Hook going to be here another Bramble, and he's also going to take a death as Zimbabwe is going to help stun him out. So now we're looking to steal the kill here. Actually, St. Rox does instead of the power through, propelling himself over 200 gold per minute. And this mid tower is next on the list of things that the Reason Gaming are going to destroy. Meanwhile, off the side, Gauntlet Blast is here on to Devour. Weave Field misses. There's a nice stun, and he's going to die once again. Bismatica on that Devourer, really not having a super fun game, six deaths already. Myrmidon won't be able to take any stuns as Staccato was down. It is now back up, and now he's getting real aggressive here. Same Popsy Energizer helps his buddy get out. We feel actually will catch Gauntlet there, and... They're all going to be enough to finish him off. Zane actually in some trouble. And is he going to live here? Runs right back in the after Rapsi Ultimate, and he will be alright. In the meantime, Master Rom gets picked off by Gauntlet. Let's see if Rapsi can actually survive this. She cannot. The Nightfall will kill her. That's going to finally be a kill for Legion side. Joust not going to be in time, and Sir Benzington will fall. So it ends up being a two for one, as now we're going to have Rhapsody does die in exchange for support and a Sir Benzington. Yeah, for sure luck. Meanwhile, Hook actually off an uh, Imbaboy, and he will die. So a nice hook there from Bismatica, finally getting some revenge. And the fourth kill of the game. And we, look at, we, we very well could be looking at 15 minutes CC. As obviously, it's just getting real out of hand here. Hasted Gauntlet coming in uh, into two, but he just doesn't care. Actually, the three is Master Rums is here as well. And another port. We're just to get a Hastrian, so he's just like, alright, I'm gonna keep running away. <laughs> Meanwhile, here off the side, Zane stalks, and he's gonna start putting in all sorts of damage onto Myrmidon. Takes the magic card there. Ultimate Gauntlet Blast will finish off Master of Arms. Good. Gets the Gauntlet hook back, and Devour's gonna eat him. Weakfield's gonna be right on top of that. Probot's gonna be in some trouble here. Let's see how many return kills they can get, though, in the meantime. Joust coming in from Sir Benzington, and it's gonna be Myrmiton's death and Bramble's death. Devour will be finished off by a power throw. Gauntlet Portal came back in, looking for the kill on the Benzington, who will port over the cliff. Gauntlet not having the hook at the time, and therefore Benzington will get away. Ends up being a 4 for nothing in favor of the Hellborn side, as once again, nobody in any real danger. Gauntlet now just screwing around with the hook and having some fun putting Zane in a weird position. Secondary mid tower will be heavily pressured, and Reason are going to take, look to take down their fourth tower of the game. So yeah. Middle lane 
Crowboss clicking for a hook. We'll hit one on Gauntlet with the just tail end of it. Uh, sorry. Bram Bramble. That was Bramble, not Gauntlet. Gauntlet was on the hit the hook. Hook not gonna quite connect from Devour. Almost. Painful. He's now here on Rhapsody, sitting up in the front lines. Devour looking for the angle to get a hook onto him. Not gonna happen. As he gets the creep, but obviously no Rhapsody with some strong positioning there. Sitting behind me. Creep line actually just gonna walk up and get ultimated there, but pretty easy follow up as Devour now is gonna get turned on. He's the first one to drop. Benzitin gonna joust away. Murbanon has the waveform. And he will finally use it here. Zane diving pretty deep and gonna have to get out of there with a the stock. Everybody's surviving actually after Devour takes the death. But reason continuing to just be like, yeah, let's start killing some stuff in the base, because we can do that at this point. Lift fortification going off, not going to do too much to save it off, as Master Forms also drops the goo, which will help the anti push. It's a hut. It's a hut, you guys. And Reason just completely not allowing their opponents out of their base, keeping the aggression of Devour, faking the hook there, but not going to be anything. Vote to concede goes out, and I would not be surprised to see this path. And I don't think Legion are pretty much are interested in wasting any more of their time. Hook going to be in here onto Zane, but he's just going to run away with the stock. Takes the Magikarp stun, but not the weak field. Spore Breath not going to do much. Gauntlet has the hook there on the Master Runs. Easy kill. And. Nope, vote failed. So maybe we'll stick in this for a little bit longer. Hooking me there, actually will hit on him, but why also takes the weed field stun. He's gonna be able to show a nice ultimate for Rhapsody. He's just gonna be able to walk out of there at this point. Devour gonna take all the damage, and he's gonna be the first one to fall. Bramble put the spore breath down, that's not gonna be able to save him, I don't, don't think, and that's the CC by anyway. So, they're pretty much done with this. They're gonna finish off Bramble here. Will Pro Busk. Weed field goes down onto Rhapsody in the background as they're still fighting past the CC. Lancelon will finish her off, and Weed Field as Murbanon trying to live here. Puts the Kelp, or Magikarp down. Amberboy chasing into this base, and he pour the keys away before he can get killed, actually. Benzington, one auto attack, and they will kill each other no off. So now he's going to take her. No, St. Rock, excuse me, and he will live, so. <laughs> Double D. Can't say the same about Murmidon. Anyway, everybody's finally DC from this game, but pretty much a typical situation of Reason outplaying their opponents, and there's not much more to say to that. So they will move on to the round of 16, and WG will be knocked out.